In this video, I want to show you a couple things you can do with your rave valves on a Sea-Doo 951 motor. And these are things that I haven't come up with. These are things that guys who know a lot more about these motors have done. So I'm not taking any credit for coming up with this stuff, but I just wanted to show you because there's not a lot of videos out there on this. The one on the left, obviously I've disassembled already. And this guy here, I haven't done anything with yet. But first thing I want to do is just gonna drill a hole in the cap. The cap doesn't do anything other than just kind of keep everything in there and together. So what this will allow us to do is just see if that ray valve's opening correctly, if they're opening at the same time, that type of thing. Remove the retaining clip here. Just be careful there's gonna be pressure on the cap because there's that spring underneath. Just gonna to wanna to push the valve up. You've got this spring retainer here. You just pull that guy off and then push the bellow down all the way around. And then this guy will unscrew. I believe it's a 10 mil, if I'm not mistaken, if you need a tool to do it. Okay. Again, you're going to have a spring here. Then on the shaft of the blade, you're going to have this little retainer. And you're going to have an O-ring there as well. And you should also have an O-ring on the bottom side here. I have taken these apart and cleaned these up. That's why they look like this already. They definitely will be a lot dirtier if you're just pulling it off the motor. To get the bellow off, you can usually just pull that up like so. You got the similar style spring down here. So now we can take the cap and go ahead and drill a hole in it. So what I'm going to do is just find my center point. Just take a small drill bit. This is, you know, probably it's under eighth of an inch for sure. And I'm just going to do a pilot hole. Then what I like to do is take one of these step drill bits and just go and open that hole up. So that one is five eighths of an inch. Just go ahead and clean it out. If there's any plastic that you didn't get, just so that doesn't interfere with anything when we're done. Okay, and that's the first mod you can do to these rave valves. This is really, you know, something you can do on any boat. If you have trouble with these guys opening, or you think you may have trouble with these guys opening, you can now do this. And then as you're on the trailer, you can blip the throttle and see if it's opening, if it's opening partially, if one's opening, the other's not, that type of thing. So this next thing we're gonna do is more for a performance boat. Um, don't really need to do this if your boat's stock. The way that these valves are controlled is electronically. Um, we're gonna actually go and control them now by exhaust pressure. You can see on this one here, I've got a hole drilled in it, whereas this one does not. So this is the stock one. This is the one I've already modified. You can see that hole there. So some of the older CDUs would uh, come stock like this, but the 951s didn't. So we're gonna go ahead and drill this out and I'm gonna show you how to do that. On the lower side here, you can see right here, we do have the spot where that hole would be. Just gonna get a little more light in there to show you. So where that hole would come through, this is actually on an angle. And then down here in the bottom, you can kind of see that little lip where it would go through on an angle. So you can see right down here, we have this little lip. That's just to give you a little extra material because you're gonna be drilling in on an angle. Now figuring out the angle is what's key. I've read online it's about 12 degrees. If you do have a drill bit that has a flat bottom, this one's kind of tapered, but if you get something or even just a you know small piece of eighth inch uh, metal, you can kind of see the angle just by rotating it around and just feeling where it just levels out and it's basically right there. Coming over to the drill press here, what I've done is just clamped. Um, these are actually just a feeler gauge, you know, similar to this one. You need about a half of an inch just to raise that up. So I've gone ahead and done that. Even when you get it raised up the correct distance to get that bit to go down right through, you also have to orient it correctly because if you do it like this, it's not gonna go. What you need to do is line up perfectly so perfectly vertical you need to line this up to where your drill bit is going to be centered you're also going to make sure it's lined up with this protrusion here what i like to do is stand directly in front of the drill press just slide this up a little bit higher and lower that down and then i can see where i'm lined up perfectly just take note of that carefully then slide it down and double check it now this is my final bit i have this in here from doing the last one I'm going to replace that bit with my smaller pilot hole. You're probably going to want to do something around a sixteenth of an inch or smaller. Um, this one here is an eighth inch we're going to be finishing with. What I've also done here is just centered that as best I could with a punch, just so it gives my drill bit something to guide to. And keep in mind when you're doing this, you don't want to be doing it on this side. You want to do it on this side. This side actually is where we're going to get the feed from the engine. So always decide with the little notch here and that little protrusion down there. Okay, so once you get that pilot hole done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just kinda do the exact same thing, verify everything, and then do it with your larger eighth inch bit. 
got that hole finished up there. Uh, one tip I want to give you when you're using the small drill bit, just before you break through here, that's when you have your greatest chance to break your bit. And if it's broken off in there, you're going to have to get new valves. So my recommendation is clean your bit out. What I mean by that is just make your cut, pull it out, you know, flip it over, tap it off, clean everything out, make sure there's no metal in your bit. And uh, do that a couple times as you're going through, and that'll just ensure you get through. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Let the bit do the cutting. If you got a nice cobalt sharp bit, you're going to be fine. Now, a couple other things before we go and reassemble. Just want to talk about little details. So I've got four O-rings here. The one on the far left is a different size from all the others. So just ensure that when you're replacing parts, these should be replaced anyway with new ones. But if you are going to reuse anything, make sure everything's consistent. Now these little retainers here too, if you notice the one on the right, right there, just above my fingertip, there's a little notch on it. So you can see that there could cause some problems for us, may not seal against that O-ring properly. So that needs to be replaced. Your rave valve blade is very important. I've lined these two up. You can see this one here, it's just slightly shorter. This one's actually been cut. If I separate them a bit there, I think you can see it better. So this one's been cut because the cylinders have been bored over. If we were to put this into a motor that had stock bore cylinders. We're gonna decrease performance because it's gonna have a larger exhaust opening. If I put this in the cylinder that's been bored over, I'm gonna clip a, a piston ring. We're gonna do some damage. The other thing too, if you notice, there's some wear marks. This one has a ton of wear. This not so important. I mean, it, it's not ideal, but it's not the most important. If I flip this guy over, there's actually a groove here. I can feel that. This one, has next to nowhere on it. So that one there should be replaced. We have two sets of springs in the 951 raves. So these ones here you can see are two different sizes. So you just wanna keep that consistent. Again, these ones here, I've got two different sizes. The two on the left are actually the same size. The one on the right is a little bit smaller. And the one on the far left looks like it is a different size from the one in the middle, but they actually are the same. The difference being it is bent. What I'm getting at here is what you want to do is just keep everything consistent. Ideally, I would use two the same size, but because this one's bent, I'm going to replace it. So we're going to have different spring pressures between these guys now. And because this one's bent, it may change things as well. There's different styles of these caps as well. This is a aftermarket. This is an OEM one. You can see it's got the Rotax. Uh, name on the top there. Ideally, I'd like two of these, but if I if I all I have is these then I'm just gonna keep it consistent That's the main goal here So same thing with the bellows you wouldn't want to put these two bellows Together and you wouldn't want to put these two bellows together. This is an original c 951 bellow This is a replacement c bellow and this one here is a third-party aftermarket bellow Reason why we want to keep everything consistent the material these are made out of is different Okay, and that's not slow motion, that's the same type of pressure. This one here is a, a harder material. This one being the softest, this one's kind of in between. So again, I just want consistency. This is what I'm gonna use because you can't get these anymore and I'd prefer not to use aftermarket ones. So all that said, now I've got my valve rebuilt, got a new gasket in there and we're ready to go and install this back into the CDU. So just to explain this a little bit further now, we're gonna have exhaust pressure come up through this hole here from the engine. It's going to hit here, travel across this channel to the hole we drilled, which will then push the bellow up and pushing the ray valve up. So I'll just go ahead and reinstall those. Now, normally on these, we'd have our hose connected up here, which then goes up to the solenoid there behind my um, cooling line. That then follows along, comes to that line under there, which is under your carbs. There's a check valve down there as well. And what we're gonna have to do is pull that off because that's our pulse line and we're just gonna cap that off. So your final step here is just to connect the two ports there that uh, we're going to the solenoid, just to connect them together with a length of hose. That'll just equalize pressure between the two. So I'll just secure those on with a zip tie and then we're all set there. So those are a couple mods you can do for performance applications on a SeaDoo 951 to the rave valves. So hopefully this video helped you out. I got a lot of other videos about modding these motors on my channel, so please take a look at that as well.